Okay, so we're going to talk about the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle, depending on which term you've heard before. The Krebs cycle is the older version, the citric acid cycle is the new version. So, here is the title. This is the third video out of four that you will be able to watch on cellular respiration. We already talked about the transition step. That's this piece right here. The transition step is the part of cellular respiration that takes the pyruvate formed in glycolysis and imports it into the mitochondrial matrix from the cytoplasm. So this three carbon molecule right here is pyruvate. And technically, for every glucose molecule, one glucose molecule yields two pyruvate. So this would actually happen twice. So we've already covered this entire step, but just as a quick review, our electron carrier NAD is reduced to NADH. We lose some carbon dioxide and coenzyme A is added to this compound. And what we end up with is something called acetyl-CoA. Now acetyl-CoA is technically the first reactant in the citric acid or the Krebs cycle. And um, this Krebs cycle actually is a series of 12, there are a series of 12 enzymes that are going to be modifying this molecule repeatedly and uh, for the purposes of the AP biology exam you don't have to memorize the 12 enzymes or all of the 12 steps which is really nice because when I was in high school I did have to memorize them don't ask me to tell you all of them now um, because I'm old and I forget things but um, you know we can all google it and we'll know the names of all those enzymes and, and if you want to major in biochemistry then you know, you can memorize them later, but for the purposes of the AP exam, you don't have to know the individual names or the individual reactions, which I think is kind of nice. Uh, <clears throat> so, the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to take acetyl-CoA and we're going to get rid of that coenzyme A that we just added in. Now, the reason that we do all of these reactions has to do with getting this molecule from point A to point B, and um, again, we talked about energy coupling with chapter eight, um, that the idea that we're taking um, what was normally an endergonic reaction and we're using exergonic reactions, coupling them together to make this whole process energetically favorable. And of course, we should probably have another video just on that. But just keep in mind, it makes it sometimes it doesn't make sense. You know, why would we add something and then take it right away again? Well, it has to do with using this energy coupling that we talked about in chapter eight. So. Back to our process here, we remove coenzyme A, and then a couple of reactions later, we're going to lose two carbon dioxide molecules. And remember, carbon dioxide is a waste product for our overall reaction, our you know, C6H12O6 plus 6O2 yields 6CO2 and 6H2O. Remember that we've already lost two carbon dioxides up here and there's only one written here but remember this is going to happen twice because we had two pyruvates so we're losing two co2s right up here the other four are lost right here in the krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle and it says two again but remember this entire process is going to happen twice because we had two pyruvates to start with which means we have two acetyl coas which means this cycle happens twice so we lose four carbon dioxides overall two per turn Alright, so that means that we've already taken care of this entire part of our equation and we've already taken care of glucose with glycolysis. So you might notice that we're still wondering where is this oxygen coming to play and what about the water? And we'll talk about those a little bit later. The next thing that we're going to talk about is again we're going to be reducing NAD to NADH and as you might be able to tell by the diagram this is going to happen three times. So we're going to reduce three NADA, NADs, pardon me, NADs to NADH. 
Later on down the road, we're going to take a DP and inorganic phosphate, abbreviated PI. We're going to make some ATP, one molecule of ATP right here. And again, it happens two times for a total of two ATPs. And then we have another electron carrier we haven't met yet named FAD. FAD is also going to be reduced to FADH2. It's going to carry some electrons. Remember we talked about the hydrogen atom being just one proton and one little electron. That's a terrible drawing of hydrogen. But again, we're going to carry the electron, which is the important thing that we need, and we're going to drag that proton along with it. Um, and that's a form of potential energy. We'll talk about that later with the electron transport chain. So basically, this cycle continues circling around and around and around, but for every glucose molecule, it's going to happen twice. So overall, just as a review, we lose two CO2s per turn, so a total of four. And that's a waste product. We, uh, I'm sorry, we reduce three NADs per turn for a total of six NADs to NADH. And we make one ATP per turn for a total of two ATPs. And then we are going to reduce one FAD per turn for a total of two FADs. So those are all the important things that we need to keep track of so that later on we can find out exactly how much energy we're building up and where are all these reactants and products. And that is an overview of the Krebs cycle.